So the uh, budget proposed for the uh, legal department over uh, last year's is uh, up 1.55 percent. That only reflects the um, wage increases approved by the board utilizing that portion of the monies that were already under budget. And so um, provided that we don't have um, uh, some trials that utilize outside counsel, um, I'm thinking that the figures I've presented to you here are, are accurate for 2020. Do you want to talk about the figures? Uh, yes, the figures, um, there are two portions of the uh, legal department budget. One is the uh, inside portion, which is the first half here, uh, which is uh, run uh, uh, $134,373. And that is um, actually what the cost to run the entire legal department, including benefits that aren't reflected here is less than $100 an hour. Mm -hmm. uh, the legal expenses, um, we have $1, it, this is the outside portion, we have $1 on for legal expenses, for uh, damages and judgments. We have not had those uh, in many years. Uh, the outside counsel fees budgeted is $30,000. Um, that's a sum that in, in the last few years has been uh, overspent, not because of frequency of use of outside counsel, but rather cases that had been assigned to outside counsel for various reasons coming to fruition, mm -hmm. uh, or getting closer to trial, rather. Uh, then for collective bargaining, we have basically a placeholder figure of $5,000. Uh, that figure years ago used to be 35000 but because of the utilization of in-house staff, mm -hmm. uh, including myself, uh, basically zero has been spent on that. Uh, the uh, other labor costs is uh, $10,000. That is depending on usage, uh, too. Uh, this year, that will have been slightly exceeded at, by year's end, but in most years is, is, is not involved. It just, again, is situational. Um, litigation expenses at $5,000. Uh, this year we had several items involving uh, experts and uh, transcripts to be prepared that caused that to be exceeded. Again, it's a situational <coughs> item rather than a regularly recurring item. And so uh, that portion of the budget uh, I anticipated is a fit about approximately fifty thousand and one dollars, and so uh, that gets you to the uh, default budget figure of one hundred eighty four thousand three hundred seventy four dollars. Thank you. Questions, Mrs. Wolseley. Uh, I have no problem with the budget. I did read your confidential memorandum, and, and I have no problem with that. Um, I would like to see us try to clean up, please, Aquarian, the Well 22 and the Wigan Way stuff and the uh, shoveling out of the hydrants. Do we have any hope of cleaning that stuff up fairly soon? Uh, it, that's... Um, <laughs> I know. One I'm of those just, matters is I'm that... I'm just the, hopeful. The, uh, the, the cleaning out of... Uh, the, the, the clearing of snow... Uh, that Aquarian should be doing of, of its own privately owned hydrants. Can we get our shotgun out? Yes. Oh, all um, right. It's, it, that, that's a subject that was uh, <laughs> uh, a subject of a complaint that we filed with the Public Utilities Commission, which the Public Utilities Commission uh, declined to even hear. And so that's part of an appeal to the New Hampshire Supreme Court. Yeah. Uh, the New Hampshire Supreme Court has yet to decide whether to hear our appeal. If it did decide to hear the appeal, uh, those typically take approximately um, mm. a year to get mm. through. Yeah. Uh, nevertheless, the point I think will have been made, and it may be that next year when the rate case is filed by Aquarian after eight years of non-rate yes. cases, that subject has the chance of again being brought up. 
Yeah. Uh, regarding the well 22, uh, that is currently at the PUC, I'm sorry, Department of Environmental Services right. for permitting and is the subject of comments by um, experts. I think we'll get a decision on that fairly soon. I hope so. Uh, the Wigan Way matter is one that's been pending for a number of years. Yeah. Uh, was tried in front of the Water Council and a, a written decision has yet to come out. Yeah. And then I, I think that uh, that may take a significant more amount of time too. It's be crazy. You'd think somebody would be able to step up to the plate and resolve it. But thank you for what you do and I have no problem with your budget. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Um, I have no problem with the budget, but I'm just, you know, I can't help but look at the numbers of the 930 actuals for outside council being almost 300% and the five-year actuals at almost Christie's five-year average expense is over 75000 So you are confident that if certain things get settled that the 30000 is going to be sufficient I, for that I, I think in a... In a um, Obviously, the, out, the outside council cases are assigned with the board's uh, authorization, and they are situational. As I say, it's not th that there are more cases like that being handled. Right. It's that they are coming to a point of fruition, which is where you spend a lot more mm -hmm. money. Uh, I do think it's, it, it, there's a very good chance that uh, that, that may recede. Okay. Thank you. And Mr. Waddell. Yeah, I've just got to piggyback off that. I mean, the outside council fees, 30000 is not realistic, is it? Uh, not if you're talking uh, the actual trial of cases. I think in, in past years, that n when we didn't have these few cases coming to fruition, right. that is a realistic number. Right, mm -hmm. but it's... But it's it, it, it really it's depends on whether or not certain cases get resolved. Yeah, Good. yeah. That's a lot of that's that's a lot of depend. Yeah. Yeah. And the other thing is, I just want to point out the collective bargaining. You know, from thirty-five thousand dollars down to zero, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, other labor costs. Now, what are the other labor costs again? What the, what? Other labor costs are when we have specific uh, matters involving uh, employees in one way or another, where outside counsel is consulted. So, mm -hmm. so like when we have a uh, an expert do yeah. a power plant evaluation or uh, no, no, no. The other labor costs there have to do with uh, say if there are grievances, okay, yeah. or contractual matters yeah. uh, that are not collective bargaining matters. Okay, mm -hmm. that's where you have uh, sometimes outside counsel is consulted. Okay, and we haven't had very much of that at all. Mm -hmm. um, this year we have we have had some. <laughs> yeah. Uh, ap approaching or uh, possibly exceeding by the end the 10,000 figure you've got there. Okay. And the litigation expenses? Uh, again, that has, that's directly related to the litigations ongoing. Uh, mm -hmm. Those costs are made up in large part for transcripts of, of the hearings that we did yeah. do, yeah. Um, as well as uh, uh, expert on the um, uh, uh, Well 22. Okay. Yeah. And, and damages and judgments, you have that at just a, a placeholder? Pretty much, so yeah. So what happens if we lose? Where's that money come from? <laughs> well, uh, judgments um, obviously have to be paid in some way. Right. And that's uh, against the, uh, uh, the uh, general fund. That's where that comes out of. Okay. okay. Uh, in some, for, for the tax matters, we have a, a, an ongoing uh, reserve. Yeah. Uh, to cover those. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And um, Jet, I only would like you if you could just give us a ballpark of what was the type of money that we were spending on outside council before. I think it was around forty-five thousand. Where would it have been that high? Um, it, it varied by year. Uh, going way back, uh, it, it really depended on the types of activity yeah. that was going on uh, in the year. 2005, we had some uh, uh, an extended string of uh, grievances and other matters, which lasted for about five years, mm -hmm. yeah. and then it, then it went way down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I'm thinking that if if in a, in a 
in a year where you don't have those types of things going on, I think the 30,000 is realistic, actually. Yeah. So, you know, it has been low because we've been mainly using, instead of using a lawyer, we've been using our assistant town manager, Jamie Sullivan. Uh, correct? Well, it's, there's a combination of things that occurred when my uh, second person uh, passed away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Certainly, uh, Mr. Sullivan's use in the collective bargaining has made a very big difference. Mm -hmm. uh, he's taken the lead in that and done a, a great job, and I'm there as, as an assistant as much as anything. Uh, and re so he's the negotiator rather than hiring an, an outside attorney negotiator. Mm -hmm. uh, the second piece is that uh, Christina Osman in Fred's office um, at does a wonderful work with me on contracts, both on developing invitations to bid yeah. and mm -hmm. the contracts themselves once the bids are awarded. Uh, that's a tremendous <coughs> amount of help to me. Yeah. And so those two pieces. And also I have a, a, an assistant who's, who's very good yeah. uh, part-time. Mm -hmm. uh, she's certainly not a, a file clerk. Yeah. <laughs> she has skills that go way beyond that, is very dedicated, and uh, enables me to get a lot done. Good. Yeah, and I'd like to thank uh, a shout out there to Christina Osman. She does a great job. She's constantly working. Mm -hmm. She uh, is an amazing person yeah. for the town of Hampton. Yeah. Sure. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I think that's it.